Welcome everyone back uh, to my short tutorial on best practices. I hope that you enjoy the first one. This one's going to be a little bit shorter and hopefully it will be helpful to you. But what I want to talk about is naming conventions and I'm going to actually make some mistakes and show you how to correct them. So I want to talk about uh, regular variables. So we have regular variables. We're going to be talking about constants, enumerated and structures. We also can use talk about classes, but I don't want to talk about them right now. They're going to follow the same as structures and some other ones. And we'll talk about that in a later video in here. So what I'm going to do here is create a variable of type integer. And so what we want to do is use camel case. Camel case is nothing more than everything is lowercase. But if you need to have a second word, then you want to uh, capitalize the second word and if you need to have a third word so let's just create a variable called number now remember in my last video i said it's always good to initialize everything and also to comment so let's just say that we have number you can make it number one number two but maybe we want to have something like number students so let's go integer number and let's put students now the problem with that is that's a little bit challenging to read and we'll do change this to zero so what you want to do is you want to use camel case and let's just make this a capital letter that makes it much easier to do so now let's do a string and a string will do something like last name and here's going to be the first problem and you may not understand exactly what's going on why we cannot use a string variable when it's defined in IO string. Well, that's a very simple thing. So let's go and type in last name. So following our rules, we'll just type in last name. And we'll initialize it to nothing. And we're going, I don't understand. So you look at this little thing here and it says, well, maybe you need to include string. Unfortunately, that's not going to solve the problem. Let's see what this click at, add include string. Okay, that makes sense. But you should not need to use string uh, to include it, to use it. And a simple thing, you need to include string if you're going to use string functions like length and find and a bunch of other things in here. So let's give it a try, see if that works. And let's see if it goes, and it does not. Wow. I don't understand. Well, the problem is exactly the same as with the C in, C out, and endo. Yes, they're in defined in IO stream, but in order to use them, you need to say where exactly are they defined. So you would need to use, put an STD in front of them. If you don't want to do that every time you do a string, then let's just do using. and see if that works. So let's get rid of this now. Now notice that it is now green when it was not before. So you can see Visual Studio here is pretty neat. Blue for integer there and we have string is in green. So notice we have the last name in here. So everything should be first word non-capitalized or lowercase second and remaining words so maybe you don't like number students and you want to make it number of students so we just make it number of students in there so that takes care of that then you're going well why are we getting the number of the students maybe we should make it a constant so that's great so what we're going to do here is let's make it a constant and we need to tell it what type of data type it is, which is integer. Now here, we're going to do something a little bit differently. We're going to use all uppercase. Now, my personal preference is to not use any numbers in variables unless you absolutely have to them. You can use numbers. You can always start with a letter or an underscore, but you can't start with a number. So let's just see what happens if we put a number here and we put a one number and notice it doesn't like that but you can put an underscore and it likes that so i highly recommend just letters here and if you need a number put it somewhere at the end so we have string last name 
is not going to work because we don't have a complete sentence over here. So let's finish this and let's just make it, we're going to capitalize number of students and we'll make it say 25. And notice that that's a little bit challenging to read in here. So notice also that this is all uppercase and this is all mixed. It's okay because C++ is case sensitive. So this is not the same as that because we have uppercase letters. Same as your password. So let's go and make it a little bit easier. So as far as constants, you want to use an underscore to separate the words. That takes care of that. Now let's do an enum. Enum is a way that you can define numbers as words. So let's just say we want to add the days. So we're going to type in the keyword enum. And then I'm going to type in a capital D for day. And then I'm going to make a mistake here. And I'm going to put equals. And then let's just go Monday, Tuesday, and we'll just do three. Now notice that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday are capitalized. The reason being, they are actually constants. So they cannot change. So reason why we're getting this squiggly line is because we need to get rid of the equal sign. And then, of course, we need to put in a thing. So the way a num works, and this is really not about this in the video, is these are just representations or alias. This is 0, this is 1, and this is 2. So if I were to see out Wednesday, now notice as soon as I start typing it, it's there. I should get a three. Actually, I should get a two. Zero, one, two. If I want it to be a three, I would make an equals one here. So let's just run this real quick. And okay, notice that it prints out two. So if I wanted it to begin Monday to begin with one instead of zero, I can do it. Now, Wednesday should print out as three. And it does. So this looks good. So I'm missing my return statement. So you want to always have that. And let's do one more. Let's just do a structure. And structures are neat. They allow you to have many data types grouped into one. So let's just say we have a structure, which keyword struck, and we'll call it students. Now, notice the capital S. The reason why I recommend capitalizing it, because that tells you that you have created this on your own. It's not something that's built in. Same thing with the gnome day. We created this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put in a opening and closing bracket and let's just do a string and we'll call it last name and then we'll do a string first name and then we will do a let's just do a GPA so we'll do double and we'll do GPA. And because it's a double, I initialize it to 0, 0.0. The compiler doesn't care if you do 0. I just do it that way strictly because it makes it easier for me to look at it and say, oh, that's a, a double. But it really doesn't matter. So how do you declare a, a day element or a structure of students? It's very simple. We do it the same way. So I will just do day as the data type. And we'll just call it days of week. And that declares that. And you could actually do this. You can initialize it to whatever that you want. But be very careful. You cannot put an integer 
you cannot do say what is the day of the week and do see in days of week and get it because you're going to get an error you would have to use a static class that is a uh, discussion for another video so let's just initialize it say to monday and see what happens and then we'll do see out days of week And we should get, um, oops, and we should get one right now. And let's see what happens. And it prints out one. So that looks good. How do we do a structure? Very simple. So we'll just start out with students again. And here is my preference, the way I do it. There's no rule governing it. But what I do is I like to put an S in front of it and then the structure name. So I know it's a structure in there. And I also know of what type it is. That's my personal preference. So how could we do a last name? So we're going to do S, students. And notice I'm going to hit a period and look what I have first name GPA and last name so let's oops. and we'll just do my first name and leave it as such and then we'll do C out students dot first name and see what happens So we have one and my first name. So that's it. So that's naming conventions. Uh, I am very, very um, keen on proper naming conventions. It really, really, really helps you in the long run so that if you are trying to debug your program and there's an error somewhere, it really makes it easier. But it also makes it easier for someone else to read your program. If you stick to proper protocol and conventions, it makes it so much easier. So that's all I have for this video. Trying to keep it as short as possible. I'll be making more videos as time goes by to help you in your quest to become a C++ program. And of course, we want to get good grades as well. So that's it. Have a wonderful day.